Okay, in this video we are going to be making this clothes peg with spring. And we'll put a joint into it so it, it works. But really the, um, the sort of theory content is to do with the sketches. Uh, if I have a look at this sketch here. Uh, specifically we're going to be learning about these constraint tools. How you can constrain your sketch in a ver uh, sort of variety of different ways. Now we're not going to use every single one of these. Um, to be honest, you'll very rarely use some of them, uh, but I'll cover the the main ones, um, and we'll kind of use those to make this sketch. It has got this sort of funny hole in the end, uh, which I had to add in really just so I could show you some of these techniques. But um, yeah, let's get started. I'll close that down. Have a new work page very first thing as ever is to press save I'm just going to call it peg and then over on the left here I'm going to right click where it says peg v1 make a new component and click that component one twice and I'm going to name it upper peg Okay. I'm going to now create a sketch on the uh, base plane here between the blue and the, the red. Again, yours might be oriented that way around. It, it's still this, this bottom plane around here. And the very first thing we're going to do is draw a rectangle that is 72 millimeters long by 6 millimeters tall. So 72. And then I'm pressing the tab key on the top left hand corner of the keyboard to change over to that dimension which needs to be 6. Uh, again as, as in the last video if you failed to do that if you just drew it and, and clicked randomly and you ended up with a an undefined rectangle you can just press D on the keyboard to bring up the dimension tool and click a line once move your mouse away and then click once more and we can type in the numbers we want. Anytime you see a blue line, the sketch isn't fully constrained. There's still some element of flexibility, and you, you can often click and drag that. So here, that blue line, we can move up and down because we haven't set a dimension on either of these vertical lines. We're going to be using that kind of line color quite a bit as we, uh, we work through this. So I press D again and dimension this left hand side you could equally do the right it doesn't matter and make that six and this is the start point for our peg first thing i'm going to do is draw the, uh, the sort of chamfers in the end of this you could always do these afterwards uh, once it was a 3d model um, but we're going to try and get as much of the work done in the sketch as we can so i'm going to use a line tool for this i'm going to zoom in using the middle mouse wheel and click somewhere on the bottom edge here making sure that it snaps to the bottom it's not sort of floating in free space and then click once on the left hand edge just watch out for that triangle the triangle signifies that you're right in the middle of the line and if I click there and press escape to drop the line tool I, I can't move that I can drag this point around but that one is, is fixed, it's a, one of these constraints and actually for this task it's not what we want so I'm going to delete that. Um, so again when you draw your line click once on the bottom, click once on the left hand edge uh, anywhere but that midpoint. Once on the bottom, once on the left hand edge, either above or below the midpoint doesn't really matter. If you put it right in the corners you're going to get the same thing, it's going to snap to the corners and we don't want that. So I'll put that around there, it doesn't matter too much. I'm then going to press D and dimension this side. You've got to click very carefully when you're doing the dimensioning just to make sure it's exactly what you want. So it's one click on that corner and one click on the end of the line. It's two millimeters, which is what it, what it should be. Press enter and that point is now fixed in place. I'm going to do another constraint from this corner point to the end of the line. Again, make sure you actually get bang on the end of the line there. And 
bring it down, this one is going to be 4 millimeters. Brilliant. You can see the line has now changed to black. It's fully constrained. I, I can't do anything so that I can't drag it around. It's, it's set. I'm now just dragging uh, over to the other side. I'm using the middle mouse wheel for this. You just press the mouse wheel down. Your uh, cursor will change to the kind of drag icon and you can move left and right. Again, we're going to do another line, so I just press the line tool, or uh, press L for, for the line tool. All of these tools are found under this Create tab, but wherever possible, try and use the shortcuts to speed up our, our workflow a bit. Again, I'm going to click once on the bottom, but this time I want to show you one of these tools. Uh, so we're actually going to click just a little away from the edge, and then uh, press Escape key, or press the tick just to signify that you're finished with that line. Now if I want that line to touch up against this one and then be stuck to it, the tool we need is the coincident tool. It is this one here. You select once on the end of the line and once on the line you wish it to stick to. And If I hover over that you can see that coincident tool is now in place, that constraint here the same on this bottom one. Fusion will naturally um, add in these constraints such as if I were to drag it to the middle and, and, and let go it would add a, a midpoint constraint uh, and when you started the line on the bottom it added in the coincident constraint and we've just um, added that constraint manually afterwards there. Okay we're now going to add the dimensions uh, so D key and again notice the cursor changes from standard to uh, the dimension tool, click once on the top right corner, once on the end of that line that is now stuck to the uh, to the right hand edge. This is going to be two millimeters, and then I click once on this bottom left edge, once on the bottom right, and see how the line is currently blue. There is flexibility; it can move left and right until we put a dimension in here. So 26 millimeters, and that line goes black. those are our two chamfers. We're now going to um, put uh, the, the two circles that will form the big kind of cutaways in the peg in. We're going to do this in a slightly odd way really just to show you some of these tools and, and how they can be used. So we're going to draw a line uh, but this is just a construction line so I'm going to change it to construction mode and I want to draw it somewhere on the bottom edge but again avoiding there that midpoint uh, stay away from that because we don't want it to be snapped to the middle of the uh, the clothes peg. So I'm going to draw it um, up, I'm going to touch the top edge again staying away from the midpoint but put it at a slight angle. Now I want that line to be uh, perpendicular to the upper edge I want it to be at 90 degrees so the tool I use for that is the perpendicular tool. With all of these constraints, if you keep the mouse still for a couple of seconds, it will bring up a, a sort of description. So select sketch objects or change constraint type. So we just select the objects we wish to be made perpendicular to one another. So I'm going to click once on the top edge and then once on that line. And you'll see it's brought in that little um, perpendicular icon. This line is now fixed at 90 degrees and uh, it's fixed as a, a coincident at the top and a coincident at the bottom just because we started and ended our line um, on the top and the bottom lines. Right, I'm going to put a dimension in D. Uh, click once on this line or at the bottom, it doesn't matter too much. Once on the left hand corner and that is going to be 32 millimeters. We're then going to draw some circles, so I'm going to press the C tool and draw one circle just randomly and that's going to be 9mm. You'll note it's still in construction mode, uh, it's still a dotted line which is not really what we want. So to change this from a construction line, uh, the sort of dotted line, back into a solid line, select it and press construction on the right. We're now going to draw a second circle. 
Now it does need to be nine millimeters in diameter. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, but I'm not gonna specify that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it smaller. Now there's a tool up on here, this equal tool that makes any two lines the same length. And we'll use that here. Click once, twice. And you'll see it has this little equals symbol. It means that both of these shapes will be the same size. And if I change that, they'll both change together. Brilliant. Okay, in the, um, the sort of final sketch, these actually need to be at the same height as one another. And you can see at the moment, they're not. They're both sort of, they can move in, in free space. So we're going to constrain them. First thing we're going to do is use this one on the left, horizontal vertical constraint. Now, this is a slightly odd way of using this tool, but it, it works. And I'll show you how you might use it. Uh, in a more conventional way in a moment. But if you select the m middle of this circle and the middle of this circle, it will fix those two points horizontal to one another. And you can see this symbol here, the line with the sort of dashed line underneath is the horizontal symbol. If I press escape to drop that constraint and, and start dragging these around, you'll see they're now fixed horizontally. They can move up and down, they can move away from one another, uh, but they'll always be horizontal. Now the way that you would usually use this tool would, would be with straight lines. So I'm just going to draw two lines here. There we go. And this tool works for either horizontal or vertical. If a line is closer to vertical, and you need it to be vertical, you can click it and it will become vertical. And if a line is closer to horizontal, again, click it and it will become horizontal. You'll notice any rectangles you drew. So the one we drew right at the start has one, two, three, four of these symbols just as a standard. Uh, and that ensures that it's a you know, perfect rectangle. What we're going to do now is set the sort of distance between these to be a fixed distance. And again, this is a slightly odd use of this tool, but um, it's, a, it's a reasonable application for it. And we're, we're going to use the symmetry tool here. And we're going to make sure that these two circles are symmetrical around this uh, construction line we put in earlier. So we're going to select the tool and first we are going to select the uh, the two shapes that we wish to be um, symmetrical. So one, two, and then we're going to select the line around which we wish it to sort of be symmetrical. And again, if you hold the mouse still, you can see it says select a symmetry line. So if we select this line, these two circles are now equal to one another in size. They are horizontal uh, center points and they are also symmetrical. So now if we drag them around, they can still go up and down. Uh, they can still go left and right, but they will now be sort of symmetrical to one another. And at this point we can put in uh, the dimensions we need. So I'm gonna press D for dimension once on the middle and then once on this line here. If you select the point, it's going to measure the, the point, the distance between those two points, which isn't the end of the world. If you bring your mouse down, it that will become a horizontal distance. Just to sh show you a little trick, if you select a point and then a line, it will always be horizontal. It would be um, the distance to that line. Anyway, that distance is going to be 13 millimeters. So now they're getting more and more constrained. Now they can only move up and down. I'm going to put in one last dimension between the middle of one of the circles and the baseline of the peg. 
and that is going to be 2.5 millimeters. And you can note when that last dimension went in, these have then became solid black. Okay, a couple more little bits to add. I'm going to press Escape just to drop that dimension tool and then click R for the rectangle. This is going to be a more conventional way to constrain an object with uh, just with standard dimensions. This little cutaway needs to be 2 millimeters tall and 2.5 wide. And you can see the, the bottom line is, is black. That can't be moved up and down and the, the side lines, the vertical lines are blue because the whole shape can move left and right. We are going to put a dimension in and dimension the left hand edge to the left hand edge of our peg. And that's going to be 24 millimeters. I'm going to put a little uh, circle in just at the intersection point here where the construction line from earlier meets the baseline. That's going to be two millimeters. And then we're going to add this kind of curved top portion in here. I'm going to press C for circle and draw a small circle in there. Now I want this circle to touch both the top edge and the bottom edge here. I'm going to set a dimension, so I press D and make that circle 3 millimeters. Now at the minute there's nothing constraining the circle aside, aside from its 3 millimeter diameter. So if I drag it from the edge it won't make it any bigger or smaller, it just drags the whole shape around. So the tool we're going to use to stick this circle to this line here is the tangent symbol. And you can see on the symbol that it's a circle just touching the line. So I select that, I select the circle, and then the edge. And then once more, the circle, one click on the circle, one click on that edge, and it will fix it. There you go, it's gone black, it's sort of set in place. One last thing we're going to do is draw another circle just out in white space. This is going to be a 1.5 millimeter circle. And we want this circle to be concentric to this circle. It means they share the same midpoint. Now the easiest way to do that would be to drag them and drop them on top of one another and, and that would be fine. Um, Fusion would apply the constraint we're just about to do manually. Um, so that, that method would work, but just to show you, if you click concentric, select one circle, and then the other, they'll sort of snap inside one another. And there we go, that's our peg shape fully constrained. Um, I suppose just a, a little tip really, if you ever get stuck or you've drawn a dimension or a line or something that you just wasn't supposed to be as as it, as it looks. If you press the escape key it'll either drop the tool as it's about to do there or it'll it'll drop the line you're drawing so the escape key is a, is, is a good tool to use. Okay that's our peg profile finished. I'm going to right click and press pull and select that profile. I also need to zoom in here and pick up this, uh, this ring. I'm going to change the angle so we're looking at it from a slight angle here and drag out nine millimeters and press enter. So there we go, that is one half of the peg. What I'm going to do now is right click the upper peg and copy. And I'm going to right click our peg model up here and paste new. If you just paste it's a it's a copy of the first one and any changes made to the first will um, be applied to the second. If you press paste new you can change the first without it affecting the second. It's, a, it's an entirely separate um, component. I'm going to drag this out. doesn't really matter how far and then you want to rotate it round if you can. You have to quite careful here and look until you see that curve. Uh, you really don't want to be using uh, this curve here or there's one at the bottom to rotate it. Um, 
in that axis it's this this one and we will twist it around 180 degrees press OK as you see it's ghosted out the upper peg the first one we drew is still active I'm going to activate the entire model by pressing the activate component and it's worth at this point once clicking once uh, and then a second time and just renaming this lower peg brilliant what I'm going to do now is apply a joint to these two so they they pivot around one another you can either press uh, joint up here joint here or you can press the J key which is what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to press capture position and we have to select the two components I'm going to start with the the upper peg the first one we drew and it's this circle here that we want them to pivot around and actually the point I want is that little crosshair that's just just about here but as I move my mouse away it disappears it's quite a nice little uh, tool in fusion that if you want to pick up a piece of geometry like that cross put your mouse on the flat surface anywhere on the top of this peg for example so that you can see the cross hold the control key bottom left corner C T R L hold that down and that will then fix your selection to this top face and then I can move out and, and select that point if you don't hold control as you move your mouse it moves to the the other faces and then into free space and over then eventually to the other uh, component so again mouse on the top hold control pick up that point there and it's asking in our kind of joints uh, tab here on the right to select the second component so I'm going to select that pivot point as well again hold your mouse over the top of the flat space or the flat surface hold the control key select that and it might flip it around if it does uh, just press this flip button here and I've got a couple of options um, the, the rigid will be the, the standard that just kind of locks these two absolutely together at the set distance they are they can't move or rotate or anything it's not really what we want for this one we are going to have a revolute and you see that will then revolve around that pivot point and press OK. So the problem now, I've just clicked this and I've dragged it, they can pivot against one another but they're both just floating in free space and they will sort of float as their, their default if you like. I'm just going to undo that so it's back in its original position. I need to fix one of these two objects in 3D space I think it would make sense to fix the first one we drew so I'm going to right click the upper peg and ground it and you'll know this little um, thumbtack symbol appears that component is now locked it's fixed in place and if I grab the other one it will pivot around that point and then crash all the way through the other object we can stop it moving through by coming into the assemble tab and enable all contact and then any physical objects will no longer push through one another there we go right only thing to add now is the spring so I'm gonna go create coil and we need to uh, capture position click on the flat top surface it's asking you where you want to do your drawing it doesn't matter which one you um, you draw so uh, I'm going to start on the top of the upper peg I'm going to look click top so I'm looking top down at it and it's the very midpoint I wish to select uh, so it should snap to that and drag out it doesn't really matter how big you make it because we're going to input the correct dimensions here I'm just going to bring this around from the side so you can see what's going on the diameter needs to be 7.5 millimeters the number of revolutions is going to be 7 which it is the height though is minus 9 we, want, we wanted to go down 9 so minus 9 now at this point it's actually failed to build it's because the, um, the thickness of the coils is too great they're crashing into one another if we change that to 1 millimeter we have our spring in place 
So from new body, I'm just going to make it as a component and press OK. And then we have upper peg, lower peg, and now we have spring. Lovely. Last thing to do then is to add uh, the right sort of material to this. So I'm going to press A for the appearance your window will look something like this. We can keep it as bodies, we want the whole body to be uh, coloured. If I come down to wood, scroll down to pine and drag out. And because we pasted new, we have to apply a, a second pine finish to the lower peg. If we just pasted it, it would have pasted them both together. We can close that down. And actually the very last thing I'm going to do here, that joint uh, is, is visible and displaying the, the degrees. On the left here I'm just going to click uh, the eye symbol, get rid of the joint and that's it. That is our peg finished.